welcome ladies and gentlemen to thema strategic case study uh, p3 complete essentials revision segment number 8 or rather the final segment of this uh, revision series uh, this is going to be very important as well let's have a look it's a very interesting area too uh, this is the essentials revision on cyber security and in this segment we will be looking at the entire syllabus scope uh, which includes an understanding of what cyber security means the threats the processes and the tools and techniques uh, involved uh, that can be used uh, as far as cyber security is concerned uh, before we get started as you know i have to give you a kind reminder uh, please have a notebook and pen on the ready follow the slides and my explanation carefully make notes as you deem necessary uh, do maintain a list of key topics that you feel you are weak at so you can self revise later at your convenience and maintain a list of key performance and management tools that can help model answers in the case study exam a quick reminder on the co activities as well uh, co activity d is evaluate and mitigate risk and co activity e is recommending and maintaining a sound control environment if you pay close attention in the areas column uh, you will notice evaluate and mitigate cyber risk and that is the segment or that is the section or the task that is covered through this segment all right so to get started with uh, let's introduce ourselves ourselves to the concept of cyber security it all starts with the idea of sensitive information which is considered to be a key driver for businesses and protecting the same is of vital importance and uh, the concept of cyber security becomes so very important because as you run a business you realize that there is going to be a bulk of sensitive information that you need to maintain and protect that is where cyber security comes into play a key risk associated to sensitive information will be the reputational risk that can arise in the event the sensitive information is compromised other risks include downtime customer flight legal consequences and the types of information that are sensitive can be personal information business information and classified information so living in a day and age where information is so very critical to a business obviously uh, cyber security becomes even more important let's see how how technology interacts with the organization will have a key impact to the risk exposure from cyber threats and these interactions right the different kinds of interactions uh, of how tech works with organization it could be based on the type of technology depending on the software that is used uh it could be based on how the organization is connected maybe through a vpn a virtual private network or an intranet or a lan network etc uh the service providers used by the company for example cloud services that a company could hire and how the company delivers the product for example online social media etc the actions that could affect the organization from a cyber security perspective so Uh, our understanding is if a business is trying to expand or acquire or restructure or regulate these are four fundamental actions that can affect the organization from a cyber security angle so we need to be vigilant of all these different aspects that brings me to the objectives of cyber security which is commonly known as aic a stands for availability a sound cyber security or uh, a sound environment cyber environment that is of strong security means that information will be available that there will be continuous uninterrupted access to information then you have the confidentiality aspect that information must be confidential and must be protected then you have the integrity aspect of things uh, there are two branches here integrity of data that is data should be reliable and the integrity of processing that is the data should be accurate rather the information should be accurate which you get from the 
data. Now, having an understanding of why cybersecurity is important and the kind of actions that cybersecurity involves, the fundamental idea that this is all about protecting the sensitive information a business possesses, we move on to understanding the different uh, types of or basically discussing the threats related to cyber security. To start with, we can look at different types of cyber security risks. There are a number of uh, different types. It's not a complete list by any means, uh, but just a few good examples. Uh, you can have malware which is malicious software uh, under malware you can have ransomware where information is held uh, or systems are locked uh, in order to use them as hostage situations botnets which are network of private computers infected with malware and controlled by botnet agent these are designed to follow the attackers instructions without the knowledge of the owners then you may have Trojans, which pretends to be a useful thing, but secretly release a software to system generally to control machines subsequently. So these are different types of malicious software you can have. Uh, another example is malvertising, which are online adver advertisements where malware is written into. So you click into it, um, you know, you are exposing yourself to a cyber security threat. Then you can have viruses which replicate endlessly and infect programs and files and damage or destroy data. Uh, these were uh, booming, uh, I remember back in the late 1999, uh, you know, uh, the, the last uh, decade of the, the 20th century and uh, early uh, 21st century. Then you can have spyware uh, to spy on victim systems without being detected. For example, you can have key loggers that uh, uh, pick the uh, logging information, you know, your password and username, etc. So these are different types of malicious software that can be a huge risk in terms of cyber security. Then you can have application attacks. These are softwares that attack an application. Uh, under this, uh, there are basically four different types of attacks. DOS, SQL, cross-site scripting and buffer overflow. In denial of service or DOS, you would have seen this error, MS-DOS errors uh, with you know a large number of uh, like you get uh, 0 multiplied by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 and 4 error, you know, that kind of DOS errors which are basically application attacks that overwhelms the system resources so it cannot respond to service requests. Uh, SQL injection uh, these, these are injections that overwhelms the system resources so it cannot respond to service requests. Um, Cross-site scripting attacks are victims attacked uh, when visiting another organization's website and buffer overflow attack uh, where systems cannot store information which is being sent and starts overwriting on existing content. And uh, so these are the different types of application attacks. I do want to make a small uh, correction and an update on SQL injection. Uh, what an SQL injection can do is to read sensitive data from the company's database. It could modify data and it can even execute administration operations like even shutting down um, and, and transferring data. Uh, it could recover the content of a given file and in some cases even issue commands to the operating system. So if and when SQL injections are being used negatively, you have a serious cyber security threat um, exposure level. And here you have a complete view on the slide. And next we can look at uh, different types of hacking. You know what hackers are or you know what hackers do. Uh, hackers gain unauthorized access to a computer system and they gain access to privileged information such as passwords, competitive information uh, and they cause fraud. Uh, there are three types of hackers, uh, black hat hackers who hack with malicious intent, uh, they steal, delete etc. Grey hat hackers who sit in the middle, they are not very specifically malicious uh, or well intentioned, they normally work for monetary gain. Then you have white hat hackers, they usually hack with the permission of the company. So we will notice an instance, a security response instance where we hire white hat hackers uh, 
to you know, basically strengthen cyber security within the company. Another very famous and uh, something that is highly prevalent in modern times is social engineering. This is the manipulation of people to perform specific actions or reveal confidential information. Uh, under social engineering, you know, that there, there are so many ways that people are manipulated. Uh, it could be reciprocity, which is uh, where a person is obliged to return a favor. It could be scarcity, where a person uh, or a situation where scarce resource is considered to be more valuable and you bargain with that. It could be authority, where a person with expertise is considered to be more powerful. Um, it could be consistency, where you are expecting someone to behave as expected and you exploit that. Uh, it could be linking, where people with common traits are inclined to like each other, which is massively used by Facebook applications a lot. That's why Facebook apps, like I'm talking about those games uh, embedded within Facebook, uh, those are very, very um, famous and very time consuming and very wasteful to the level that linking is being used. And uh, ultimately, it even leads to the sixth one that you see consensus which is basically herding of users uh, flocking of users uh, basically even viral marketing negative viral marketing is a social engineering situation where herding is very easy to notice then you have phishing phishing is fraudulent messages that try to that try and steal information and they even can install malware etc uh, normally, phishing can be done through SMSs, email links, fake websites, telephone calls, etc. Right? So even through a telephone call, that's why you see a lot of banks continuously reminding you through SMSs and emails not to share sensitive data because there are always people who try to fish for sensitive information. Uh, spear phishing is targeting a specific user through phishing emails. My goodness. Uh, you must be extremely careful a few years ago three four years ago phishing was a major one of the most major cyber security risks that propelled the corporate world to training almost all employees around the world uh, even when i was working at moody's corporation i had to undergo a 40 hour training on cyber security uh, to ensure like they were so vigilant about it because of the the yahoo hacking incident and all of that so uh, that is another type of cyber security risk. Now, we want to pay closer attention to social media uh, in terms of, you know, uh, the, the good things and the bad things, etc. First, let's focus on the opportunities. Now, social media, because it's not bad. Uh, fundamentally, I'm sure if you're watching this video, it means that you have uh, come across my work in some way or form because of the power of social media or I would never have been able to reach you. So there are massive opportunities like advertising, brand development, big data analytics, real-time information and gathering, uh, communication and interaction, etc. However, there are significant threats and risks to organizations through social media. One is human error uh, because you can get exposed to phishing threats, fraudulent links and inappropriate comments. Uh, you know, cyberbullying is a major issue. Uh, and one of the most common formats of cyberbullying is comment, the comment function. Then you have productivity, which uh, is a major concern. That's why you, a lot of companies, there are many companies in the world who have uh, prohibited the use of social media during the time of work because it disrupts efficiency. Uh, data protection can be a challenge, especially if you're using social media in the same system and uh, you know there are nodes and uh, points of entry. Uh, hacking reputation risk and costs like for example how hacking is a person can study very closely if you are uh, a, a, a social media addict right it means that your entire life is on social media and if your entire life is on social media someone can track and learn a lot of things and they could even go to the extent where the, they create a fake profile and personify you and your traits and your photos and your ways and your friends and your behavior uh, and and use that to uh, gain entry to certain situations which are completely uh, illegal so it is social media has significant threats like that in each of these instances there are plenty of uh, practical examples you can think of i'm sure so think of it that way remember them that way
if we focus on risks to individuals alone social media creates this risk of uh, going viral internet trolling legal issues identity fraud physical theft legal sanction and employment all of these are different risks to individuals i remember a few years ago no a couple of years ago there was an incident where a student right, a college student in india had gone viral because the student was at the wrong time and the wrong place he got caught in the video uh, and then that student had gone viral and a uh, few years later that student was still facing trouble uh, getting employment because of how that uh, going viral incident had affected his personal and professional life very poorly so there are significant risks to individuals which is why everyone must be very very careful as such uh, this is a snapshot of cyber security threats uh, first we understood the nature and impact uh, then we looked at malware application attacks hackers uh, the risks of security vulnerabilities in terms of uh, uh, which which i plugged into the initial stage and social media uh, in terms of overall risks to the individual and uh, a company next we are going to look at cyber security processes so under which one fundamental principle that we need to understand is cyber security risk governance under risk governance you look at the tone standards of conduct it expertise responsibility and reporting lines and training personnel so if your company is well governed in terms of cyber security it means that all these five elements are properly embedded in the right manner within your governance structure because of your exposure to cyber security risk you have strong tone and tone set up from the top uh, good standards of conduct the it expertise is available uh, there is sound responsibility and reporting lines accountability is very clear and people are trained continuously uh, and the trainings are updated as well on the other end uh, you have the cyber security information and communication process to think about internally the objectives expectations and responsibilities must be communicated uh, the policies must be easily accessible training and education is important and annual review is important and you must keep people informed externally policy for information dissemination must be clear and there must be one communication channels must be available uh, for all stakeholders and there must be secure lines of transmission of such information then we look at cyber security organizational characteristics to achieve cyber security a recommended framework is based on the following principles protection detection and response protection detection and response so under protection what are the areas we need to protect servers desktops laptops mobile devices networks business applications and how do we protect what are the different forms of protection i mean the above list is not at all an exhaustive list there can be multiple areas uh, that needs to be protected uh, forms of protection you identify you can authenticate you authorize and you can protect secrets and you can have physical security and personal controls and so uh, fingerprint identification uh, authentication can be retinal scan you know all kinds of uh, gadgets that can be used authorization based on access levels and see sorry seniority uh, secret protection you know what kind of uh, uh, methods are available in terms of uh, firewalls uh, there are so many digital tools antivirus software etc um, physical security you know even even simple things like setting up a pass key right, a passcode to your phone if you are protecting secrets uh, uh, physical security uh, that is basically you know the the generic physical securities that you can have uh, having uh, key cards key chains etc uh, and personal controls what are the different methods of protection 
you can have policies and policy management software updates can be done configurations can be done you know how rigorously now i use uh, windows operating system and windows 10 and they <laughs> continuously update the software once every week or once every month they have new updates coming in and one of the most common updates you will notice if you if you look look at the history of the updates there are those are software security updates uh, security products can be used uh, a vast uh, i don't know there are mcafee there are so many antivirus softwares right uh, so those are security products you can use and uh, you can have application software controls uh, input controls like monitoring logs manual authorizations processing controls like verification and checking and validating uh, output controls like physical checks and uh, logs monitoring again the second uh, aspect is after protection detection uh, detection strategies you can have event monitoring which is where you check uh, logs for any usual or unusual activity intruder detection and prevention where you monitor them in an ongoing basis threat monitoring where you study how hackers can attempt to intrude and user reports where you identify exceptional and any unusual incidents that is how you can detect finally response so you can establish a computer incident response team what you generally refer to as a cirt uh, this team will try to minimize losses restore normal operations asap and assist with investigations they can help provide data for decision making and response and assist with communication during critical periods if you have a computer incident response team now i want to take your attention to a very specific angle related to the case study now here when you think about your case study variants uh, the variants sometimes are designed especially if it is related to cyber security the variants are designed at a point where you need to either protect in which case you have to write about protection or at a situation where the circumstances require you to be detecting where you need to show your skill of detection or most commonly what we've seen is something has gone wrong and therefore you need to respond to that situation that is the most common type of cyber security variant we've seen in which case uh, you're basically reacting to a situation that has gone wrong um, all right so how do you defend against cyber security threats desktops can be defended using passwords you can have centrally managed software screen lockouts etc laptops you can encrypt them storage security policies in addition to the above can be established mobile devices security applications access control data encryption can be done network configuration and management you can control the ip addresses limit them uh, consolidate them protect them you can maintain software versions update them uh, establish firewalls for system entry block uh, uh, blocks entry from malicious or doubtful points of uh, or doubtful sources uh, you can have antivirus software etc so these are different a few examples of how you can defend against cyber security threats then we look at business continuity and disaster recovery business continuity is proactive and designed to allow the business to operate with minimal or no downtime or service outage while the recovery is being managed so if something has gone wrong and you are trying to recover uh, business continuity is your attempt to ensure that everything goes smooth while you are also addressing the incident disaster recovery is reactive and is limited to taking action to restore data and applications and acquire new hardware that is disaster recovery uh, backups is one very key element to responding to critical events nowadays backups are very very famous uh, examples of backups you can have a mirror site which is a complete recovery of front end and back end or you can have a hot backup site which is a complete replica a copy of the existing facility 
which are data centers, systems and servers. Or you can have a warm backup site where only critical hardware necessary for systems are in place. Or you can have a cold backup site where only a specific area which you've chosen is maybe it's because that's the area that is most important and you back it up. Right? For example, uh, I can tell you in terms of my data and information, I have a cold backup. Not, not a different site or whatever, just a uh, portable hard in which I have backed up specific areas of my information. These are the different types of backups uh, and this can be a very, very effective tool for cyber security uh, threats related to uh, loss of data. Now under processes one new entry that we see in the syllabus is the idea of blockchain. Now we are not going to dive deep into the workings of blockchain which is extensively discussed in E3 digital technologies. I suggest you go and check out the uh, video if you haven't. But here we need to understand that blockchain is ultimately a game of security. Uh, to quickly recap, a blockchain is summarized as a decentralized, distributed and public ledger. Decentralized, distributed and public ledger. Everyone has access. That is used to record transactions across many computers so that the record cannot be altered retroactively without the alteration of all subsequent blocks and the consensus of the network. So if there are five people involved in a transaction, a block is created or what blockchain does is if one person changes a particular piece of information then all the five the entire trail will change but it has to happen through the consensus of the network if the network doesn't permit if other people don't agree with it you cannot change that trail that is the primary trait of what a blockchain does Alternatively, it has been defined by the Bank of England as a technology that allows people who do not know each other to trust a shared record of events. What is the main benefit and why do we include it here is because of the security element. In the digital era, cyber security is a key risk associated with the use of IT systems and the internet. This is because traditional systems have been closed and so Modifications to data have been carried out by just one party. If the system is hacked, there is no or little control to prevent such modifications from happening. So uh, blockchain, when it works properly, when the, the idea of blockchain, if ever comes the day, is uh, fully fruitful, that is the day where no one person can change a particular log without the consensus of the entire transaction trail. That is why blockchain is considered an important cybersecurity process that is very modern. Uh, let's uh, apply this to our context and try to look at it in terms of relevance to accountants. Uh, ultimately, blockchain provides an unalterable transparent record of all accountancy related data. So how does this happen, especially in the accounting profession? It can reduce the cost of maintaining and reconciling ledgers and it can provide absolute certainty over the ownership and history of the assets and the existence of obligations and the measurement of amounts owed to a business and owed by a business. It frees up time to allow staff to concentrate on other responsibilities like planning, valuation, reporting rather than record maintenance. And those are just a few examples of how blockchain can benefit the accounting profession. There you go. And that marks the end of the cyber security processes discussion in which we looked at uh, various governance and information and communication aspect. Then we looked at the three critical aspects of Cybersecurity processes, protection, detection, and response. How can you defend against cybersecurity risks? And finally, we looked at uh, the idea of blockchain and why it's why it has been designed and developed uh, in the context of cyber security. That brings me to the final part of this segment, which is cybersecurity tools and techniques. 
where we will start by looking at forensic analysis. So, forensic analysis is a very, very useful tool that can be used and this attempts to identify the residues to understand an attack which has already happened and act and prevent future incidents. You know what forensic analysis does in, in general sense, right? When a crime happens, the forensics team arrives and they are one of the first teams that have access to a crime scene and they study it, they analyze and gather evidence. That's the same thing in the context of uh, cyber security in this case. Uh, what are the main areas of consideration? Uh, they do system level analysis. They check the operating system settings, any unauthorized enabling of devices, they check for fake accounts. Storage level analysis is done, which where they check databases, cloud storage, any deletions, overwritings, etc. And network level analysis, where they check the traffic behavior, network attacks and firewall, etc. Another tool that we get to use is malware analysis. These attempt to understand how the malware got into the system to prevent or protect from future threats as well. So under malware analysis, you can either go along with reverse engineering, basically looking at how the malware got into the system, you trace it backward or you decompile and disassemble where you are looking at, you, you basically deconstruct the entire software, the malware uh, to see what is the software uh, meant to do. Then you have penetration and infiltration testing. Uh, these test how effective the system is from a cyber security angle, often involves the use of white hat hackers. The processes include network discovery, where the hackers help us identify devices, operating systems, configurations, etc. Vulnerability probing is done, which are the most vulnerable devices are checked. Uh, exploiting vulnerabilities, the white hat hacker tries to gain access in this case. Uh, you basically ask the hacker to hack. Uh, internal network penetration, where you test from threats from internal users. Web application penetration testing, this is mostly related to the use of the internet, where you look at the design, the coding and the publishing issues of any websites. Uh, wireless network penetration testing. Uh, where you are looking at open, rogue or badly configured access points to your system and simulated phishing testing where you check how susceptible the workforce is to breaking security protocols or divulging sensitive information. So, if you are working in the corporate sector, you would have probably gone through simulated phishing testing uh, back in the 2016, 17, 18 years uh, where I said phishing was a major issue. And a lot of companies started doing simulated phishing testing while also parallelly training people. I know a few funny examples uh, which uh, we can talk about in the live sessions if at all. That brings me to software security. So software security is the process of writing security into the software. As attacks on software can be complex, the security needs to be considered in different ways. There are three levels of security. Level one, which prevents the attacker from gaining access to the software at all. That is level one security. Level two is concerned with making sure that if a breach occurs, an alert notifies the appropriate parties that an attack has breached the level one security. Level three is where time is critical. In any attack, no. And in a very short space of time, data can be compromised. So when the level two alert goes out, this level takes automatic urgent action, for example, by locking down the accounts and sensitive information. So you write an automatic script into the uh, software uh, to add a level three security. Uh, under software security, you can do design review where you go to design routes. Uh, code reviews can be done. You are looking at how the code is written with a focus on how someone proves they should be allowed to access the system. And then you, you can look at security testing, uh, which is in addition to assessing the strength of the controls in key areas of vulnerability, an internal audit type review will be required to test whether the controls are being carried out. Security testing. 
right in addition to compliance testing and substantive testing that brings me to digital resilience so this is the modern most modern concept of cyber security uh, this is about doing more than the minimum to protect the company and comply with regulations but you integrate cyber security into the business operations there are six actions you can conduct to achieve digital resilience or to make your company digitally resilient one you identify all the issues aim toward a well defined target Work out how best to deliver the new cybersecurity system. Establish the risk resource trade off. Develop a plan that aligns business and technology and ensure sustained business engagement. These are the six actions that you can undertake to achieve digital resilience. That brings me to frameworks. Frameworks have been created. Right, frameworks by, by various organizations because cybersecurity has become a very important mandate at the moment. Uh, although they are not mandatory, give an organization something credible to show stakeholders to confirm that they do have robust processes and controls in place. So there are a few frameworks that we can look at. One is SEMA and AICPS framework. Uh, they, are, they say cyber security involves risk management reporting through three components management description, management assertion and the practitioner's opinion. The criteria they have outlined, uh, there is a description criteria, control criteria and the practitioner's opinion that is offered with respect to the criteria. Uh, it's, it's not the most simple framework, uh, it's a little actually daunting. Uh, when you look at it. Then you have NIST's framework by the National Institute of Standards and Technology implementation tiers to provide context to choose the right level. So look, now I'm, I'm <laughs> I feel like I'm talking about something that only I know. Right. Uh, these frameworks are mostly about reporting. Reporting how well you are doing on cyber security. So, uh, just like integrated reporting by the IIRC or uh, sustainability reporting by the Global Reporting Initiative, uh, people, organizations have come up with different ways uh, and frameworks. They have pitched it to companies to say, look, you have this framework, uh, you use this framework to report. So the SEMA and AICPA report is actually one of the most detailed and, and for me, in my personal opinion, one of the most complicated. Uh, frame, frameworks uh, proposed and uh, one very rarely used one. Then you have NIST's framework where they say, okay, you talk about implementation tiers, give context to choose the right level of security. Then you give a co, uh, telling us or informing the stakeholders about a set of desired cyber security activities and outcomes. Then you talk about profiles. Uh, you map its own requirement and objectives, risk appetite and resources. So you report on the profile, the core and the implementation tiers, the levels under NIST's framework. You need to, I mean, download the framework and you know, go into a little bit of detail. If you want to study them at a deep level, but at the SES level, that is not our concern. Uh, we need to be aware that there are frameworks available that companies could adopt. Uh, the final one here, and, and in fact, my favorite is the AIC triad which has three elements, you remember the AIC framework, aimed at helping organizations understand information security and set up policies to help protect the organization. It is easy and simple. So under AIC triad, you look at availability, where systems must be online and available, otherwise organizations cannot do business. You re report on availability aspect. Integrity, where you make sure that people who modify data are authorized to do so, means the data is more likely to be accurate and trustworthy and confidentiality when data is being stored and when it is in use or in transit there need to be rules in place to limit access to those who are authorized to use it we document those rules and you make them uh, well aware across the organization those are the three frameworks uh, that we closely uh, or quickly look at and that marks the end of uh, cyber security tools, techniques and the reporting aspect uh, where we looked at forensic analysis, 
malware analysis, penetration testing, software security. And finally, we looked at how to be digitally resilient and uh, wrapped the discussion up with reporting frameworks that are available for an organization uh, which wants to report on their cyber security initiatives. And on that note, as you know, uh, do keep learning and uh, enjoy the process. We have completed the discussion on cyber security, uh, threats, processes, and tools and techniques. That is the end of uh, segment number eight, the final segment for the SEMA SES P3 Complete Essentials Revision. And uh, if you have gone through all of the eight, right, uh, seven segment seven with two parts, but segment eight, you have gone through all of them. Now you have everything you need and then some a little bit more detail uh, that you need with respect to becoming a good risk manager, which is an embedded aspect of uh, being a chartered management accountant and successfully facing the strategic case study exam. You know everything. You have everything you need. Uh, in your mind's eye. And that is the objective of my uh, SES Complete Essentials Revision Series for all the subjects E3, P3 and F3 as you know. Uh, so thank you very much for trusting the content. Thank you very much for being in the content. Uh, as you know, one of the fundamental suggestions I make is make a note of any areas that you don't feel very comfortable with, that you don't understand because in the live sessions, I expect you to uh, bring them up so we can discuss them and clarify any and all doubts that are available because we need to always move forward uh, with the notion that we are confident that we know everything that needs to be known. So my objective is that I hope I have served that objective to the best of my ability. I know that this is world class material that you are contending with. I am very happy uh, to have been able to provide that kind of service to you. So thank you again for trusting me. Uh, happy learning, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you soon. Thank you and uh, God bless.